the energy sector has been navigating rapid technological innovation, slowing demand and rising electricity prices. A steady shift towards renewable energy products is also exasperating the disruption of utilities' business models. Over the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to be diving into the disruptive drivers facing electricity utilities and explore some of the potential risks along with opportunities that traditional business models will need to embrace as the market continues to evolve. The underlying economics for conventional energy markets and systems have always shifted in favour of decentralised models of generation, especially focusing around solar PV and storage at the residential level, and larger renewable projects at the community and grid scale. In effect, this has created excess uncertainty for existing traditional energy market participants, and concerns are already being raised with regards to the future of industry investments and business decisions for large energy companies. With the attractiveness of new energy products and services, such as solar PV and storage, only increasing, the electricity industry is now regarded as a ripe for potential disruption. In particular, the new wave of technical innovations is set to disrupt business models, dramatically affect the availability of capital of the industry, and further intensify issues within the electricity market. As market dynamics continue to force the hand of electricity utilities globally, changing the business model away from one of a conventional, large-scale, centralised grid-based system to one that embraces distributed solar and storage across the entire network is the only long-term solution for electricity businesses. In the past decade alone, the energy sector has been navigating, amongst others, rapid technical innovation, the falling cost of distributed generation, increased interest in demand-side management, slowing trends in demand and shifting government policies on renewable energy incentives. In short, these factors are set to fundamentally change the way our electricity systems operate. As with all things in life, knowing where we're going it helps know where we've been, and traditional business models for utilities reflect the centralised system of electricity generation and network designs that were built up and expanded after the Second World War. This centralised system also drove a standardised approach to system security, network planning and in fact underpinned the design of the entire market. Going back 30, 40, 50 years, having large gigawatt sized thermal and later nuclear power plants in this world entirely makes sense. Indeed, the natural consequences of this approach, given there's an inherent relationship between volumes, profitability and the high barriers to entry inherent in the industry, where the electricity sector became a natural monopoly. Yet, leap forward to the early 21st century and advances in technology, environmental concerns and public policy drivers mean that the interests of utilities, preventing stranded assets, maximising electricity sales and preventing increased competition, are in tension with the interests of consumers and the environmental imperative to decarbonise the electricity sector. Utilities themselves are also likely to have a predisposition to inertia, what transition theory terms as path dependency, that is, being locked into a particular pathway that inhibits consideration and adoption of innovative ideas. This is a significant risk across the industry, given that the momentum that new disruptive technologies and big data is gathering. Utilities of the future will be expected to have their own innovative hubs and partnerships, identify new ideas and leverage the capabilities of other businesses. The evolution of electricity markets also creates significant obstacles for governments and policy makers to overcome. For example, while regulatory frameworks allow for cost recovery in future tariff proposals, existing tariff structures can create the perverse incentive that results in customers without solar PV having to pay the most for lost revenues. And since the network charges are fixed, those that are left have to pay the most, causing prices to rise, causing more people to leave and so on and so forth. Those centralised power stations that we've previously mentioned have business cases that are reliant on high utilisation rates and were built on the assumption that energy demand will continue to increase, or that innovations such as rooftop solar and battery storage are years away from impacting their market share. 
it's inherently obvious this simply isn't the case anymore. And the risk of stranded assets, large write-downs, and accountants having to mark these once assets as liabilities is only increasing. Ultimately, if the outlook for these power stations is not expected to improve through a resurgence in demand or a significant change in cost structures, then these assets will need to be prematurely mothballed. More often than not, this will involve a significant write-down on capital costs, leaving asset holders with a large sunk cost that can never be recovered from the project itself. Whilst this might all sound very pessimistic, there are a lot of lessons and, frankly, a lot of potential lights at the end of the tunnel for incumbent generators. From an industry perspective, the telecommunications sector may provide the best insights into the impact disruptive innovation can have and highlight some of the challenges and opportunities the electricity sector may face. In the 1970s, the telecoms industry was price and franchise regulated with high barriers to entry provided by the capital intensive nature of the business, as well as the protective government regulations in place. However, as mobile phone technology was developed and became widely adopted, traditional sources of revenue for telecoms firms were significantly impacted and the entire industry underwent regulatory reform to encourage competition. The electricity industry has largely avoided disruptive threats for over a century due to a large cost monopoly and the value derived from economies of scale leading to easy access of relatively low-cost capital. Yet, Business development plans and medium to long term strategies must address disruptive threats and companies themselves must be open to replace their own outdated technology with new products. The argument could be made that utilities, like any mature company buying a startup for growth for example, could simply own the disruption and then effectively hedge out the risk. Under this approach, market changes would almost be reduced to a capital allocation problem and nothing else. The question is, is this realistic? Well, traditionally, electricity utilities have increased their revenue earnings by either expanding electricity sales, i.e. consumption volumes, or, or increasing prices charged per unit of sales, i.e. high electricity prices. Whilst these levers have provided constant returns for investors for decades, due to the disruptive technological threats, combined with changing consumption patterns, utilities of the future will need to fundamentally transform their business models in order to maintain their revenue sources and to meet the higher required rates of returns for their investors. Given that electricity prices are a function of consumption volumes, when electricity sales decline due to demand management programs, innovative energy solutions, disrupted generation and a whole host of other changes, electricity companies will need to increase their rates charged across the remaining volumes in order to continue to meet the cost of providing their services. What this scenario ultimately leads to, however, is what the media has enticingly called the death spiral, where increased electricity prices simply drive further reductions in consumption by enhancing the proposition of competing technologies and demand management programs. Industry analysts are now less fearful of a large volume of customers leaving the grid. Even with aggressive estimates for electricity storage, given the concentration of solar production relative to peak demand, the technical limitation of batteries, but perhaps most importantly, the advantages that having a distributed network connection brings, for example, you can actually buy and sell your power, it is expected that most customers will maintain at least some form of network connection. The increase in solar PV generation may in fact be of direct benefit to a number of utilities since it will require additional frequency control measures, necessitating therefore substantial investment in smart grids and grid scale batteries. In effect therefore, while utilities may lose some revenue from traditional forms of generation, additional earnings from playing an integrated part in the future of smart grids and solar and storage technologies are likely to more than compensate for any losses. No sector has been left untouched by the digital revolution, but innovation is on the side of the electricity sector, and three game-changing disruptions should provide ample opportunity for existing players. A move towards electrification of transport and heating, the need to support systems full of renewable generation, and intelligent metering coupled with digital network infrastructure developments, or smart grids, will allow better control and management of power. 
What's exciting is that these three trends act in a virtuous cycle, enabling, amplifying and reinforcing innovative developments beyond what each trend can achieve on its own. Additionally, the political momentum behind decarbonising power generation shows no sign of reversing and this will force the market's hand sooner rather than later. Amongst all this disruption, new opportunities will present themselves. It's obvious that traditional business models will need to keep evolving beyond the existing framework and companies that aren't used to change will have to change to survive. Yet, those that do will succeed. For whilst the source might change, we're not going to lose our love of electricity anytime soon.